Hello guys and thank you for buying this video. Uh, this is a little tutorial in four parts because uh, of the, the width of the download. It's a little bit heavy. And thank you also so much for our station for building this uh, great community and uh, offer us this opportunity, this crazy opportunity to share our work with you. Hello to all my friends and all my supporters on Patreon and Gumroad. Welcome in my studio. Today we will have a look on the little watercolor that I'm painting for you during this session. So I work with watercolor and during the process I add a little bit of white gouache on all my color mix. Even sometimes on the shadow. That manner to work is really convenient to get a final, deta very detailing and with a nice balance between transparency and opacity. The illustration will appear more consistent and more solid than if you just work with watercolor. When you add a white gouache, you can fix possible issue with the surface of the paper and you also can play with a lot of texture and effect. I will work today on a little elf for my next illustration. This study is about just a character that I will use I hope for my traditional Christmas picture. About my tool, right now I work on a Molisking watercolor notebook, 8 by 5 inch. Nice for a little study like this. The paper is not 100% cotton, so it is not the best watercolor quality paper. Anyway, I think that Molisking needs to improve their paper for better watercolor painting, even for a simple duty. Basically, working on a moleskin is okay for just clarifying your ideas and having a sense or an idea of the colors that you can use. This year my Christmas pictures is about a trumpet maker and of course it is a Christmas elf. So I work with watercolor tube and pans and I make all my mix on a ceramic palette. Ceramic is for me the best for mixing. I use round and flat brushes, usually size 0 to 4, but sometimes more. It depends on the pictures and subjects. I use also paper handkerchief to absorb and remove the excess of colors when I want to keep transparency or light something. I don't use paper towel. I have also a mirror to have a fresh eye on the picture to flip the picture anytime I want. Here is my color palette. I work with several brands like Daler Rodney, Winsor & Newton, sometimes with Schmink, but my favorite brand for the paint watercolor tubes is Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith is an American brand from Seattle. They have a great color choice, use excellent pigment and have a great durability. It's very pleasant to use, very neat. Last but not least, and it's more than nice, Daniel Smith have a very good price. All the tube come in 15 mm when Winsor and Newton come in 5 mm. That is really interesting. So now let's go and dive with me deeply in the process of a study painting. First, before playing with the color, I protect my drawing with a crystal clear permanent protection for pencil. Like this, it prevents my color from being dirty by the graphite of the pencil. And of course, it keeps my shape and drawing enough clear for the, the color work. I start with a little contour shape with an acrylic burnt amber mixed with a little bit of raw amber. It gives a nice and warm brownish color. Often, I just lay this part on the side or I just finish by this tape with a lot of care to polish my picture. But because it is just a study and I know I will add a gouache very early in the process, I prefer to have the contour before in order to keep my drawing clear.
I use for this a Liquitex Fluid Ink. So now I start to work a little bit more like a comic ink artist. The reason I don't use black ink but brownish ink instead for the contour is because I don't want to have a result too close to a comic strip. The contour is just helping me to keep a clear and readable picture. And above all, the picture is not really a large one, so you can easily lose your shape and detail. My advice, keep this step lightly. An important thing is that you need to use very good brushes. It seems silly to say it like this and a lot of people will say tools don't make the artwork. Actually they do sometimes, or at least it contributes a lot. I have tested a lot of quality and brand. I have even tried to use synthetic because I am an animal friend, but unfortunately for the round brush, the Red Sable Kolensky is the best. Synthetic brushes have their uses, but nothing beats Sable for painting in watercolor. The tip of the brush remains flexible and energic and in a very good shape for a long time. Unfortunately, that is not the case with the synthetic ones. My favorite are Raphael and Winsor and Newton. Size 0 to 2 for the fine details. I use also flat brush to have edge and for this matter I can use synthetic. A good brand for synthetic is Royal Land Nickel or Rosemary & Co. Size 4 and 6 is ok and more.
The paper that I am using right now has not a smooth grain, so that is not very convenient for detailing. As I was saying earlier, that is okay for a study, but for the final, I will use a hot press paper because of its smoothness and fine texture. So why hot press paper? I have noticed that the colors are not always bright and luminous than if you were using a cold press. And the hot press absorbs more of the color and it's a little bit tricky to remove colors. So we gain the possibility to have more fine and subtle details, but we lose a little bit of the control of the color. Eventually, you need to choose what is important to you and for your pictures. So for me and for my level, I do prefer to have detail because I know how to control my color. You can also use a Bristol paper, very good if you work with acrylic ink, but not convenient in my opinion for watercolor. The diffusion of the color in the paper is really different. So finally, make your own test to see what you prefer.
about the hair I don't spend time on the contour because we need to keep movement and fluffy feeling. Don't hesitate to reset your paper, pad, whatever. It is very good to have clean stroke of brush and to keep the gesture supple. I will do the same thing on the final picture. Keep in mind that your support for your watercolor paper need to be convenient. And of course, you can also make a study in digital to help you for the final piece. The more study you have, the more the final piece will be easy to paint. I didn't work like this when I was young, but I guess with the age comes the wisdom. One more advice. Don't forget when you are working on your character that his aim are a great part of the personality and they must be as important as his face. They are also very emotional and expressive. Painting is a work of patience. Everyone knows that. I don't know you, but on my side, I'm really an impatient guy. So the beginning of a picture for me is always like a great exciting moment. Even if I hate sport, for me it's like a race. And I just want and need to finish it as soon as possible. Thank you guys and see you on the second part. Bye bye! Here we go again. I'm gonna introduce you my palette in detail. Actually, it's a very simple one in ceramic with mixing well, no fancy stuff, just efficient. I use in the order of the demo a lemon yellow, then a cadmium yellow or a Windsor yellow, a red cadmium scarlet, a carmine or a red cadmium dip, a cadmium orange, a yellow ochre, a burnt sienna, a rumber, a burnt umber, then ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, and I also had for creating a good dark color, a Prussian blue, a hooker green, and an alizarin crimson. Which is not on the palette. This is a tint from my traveling watercolor set, and it's a dark purple red. In place of the hooker green, you can take a viridian or uh, emerald green, but I haven't in my stock. Voila, now we need just to start. I like beginning with the face to catch right away the personality of my character. It is the most important thing, so it will be good to start with. I had to finish an illustration by a face, too much risk to make a mistake, to scrap and ruin all the picture just because of a clumsy face. At the beginning, little brush and flat brush, and we start by the color of the flesh with a mix of red scarlet cadmium and cadmium orange, and a touch of ochre. More you add water, more your color will be denaturated and light, clear.
And don't forget to keep next to you the pocket paper handkerchief. It will be very important during all the process to absorb excess of color or for removing a thin layer of color. Really, really convenient. For the moment I protect the zone where the light will be and stretch a little thin color layer on the face. More instinctive than a Photoshop, isn't it? <laughs> Now I attack the cheekbone and all the bloody parts of the face like ears and nose. As you see, I don't start with the shadow like I can have the habit. Nothing is written in the stone when I'm painting. Hello my friend, it's time for some advert. You can find all my illustrations on our Etsy shop in two sides of our print. My wife Margot will be happy to answer and give you some advice. All our prints are made here at the studio, on our Epson Pro printer. In fact, to be more specific, they are Jiggly prints, and it means museum quality. We use 9 Epson ink and Epson professional art paper, select by us to control and get the best render of color for my illustration. We also publish my book under our own Goblin's Well label, as well as postcard, calendar and various other goodies. And of course we also have some of my originals, sketch watercolor available for sale. 
do not hesitate to contact us on the subject. There is really a big choice for you. I have also a Patreon page with a small community, but uh, really dynamic. And I have also uh, a Vimeo channel for the page. So don't hesitate to support my work. You can also find a lot of news and posts on my website, gbmonch.com. There is also a little app, free app, for Goblin's Red Jigsaw Challenge. And you can find that on the Apple Store or Play Google. That's a free app, so don't hesitate to use it and to download it. And of course, you can find me at the end on our station with a lot of new pictures and a lot of new, uh, new items on the store. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.